start to send you live. Good evening. Uh, sorry, I was late. Um, I was having trouble getting on. Is the computers down on the council? Because my computer's playing up the last two days. It's, it's OK, Marion. We're just about to start the, the meeting. There have been issues. Um, I'll just introduce the meeting to the uh, people watching. Um, so good, good evening and welcome to Crawley Borough Council's council owned neighbourhood parade scrutiny panel meeting of 2nd of February 2020. I'm Councillor Bob Lanza, Chair of the panel. The agenda for this meeting has been published and is available on the Council's website. Members of the public and press are able to watch the meeting live, but there will be no public question time at any scrutiny panel meeting. Before I ask panel members to confirm their attendance, please uh, w will they ensure their mobile phones are switched off or on silent, their backgrounds are plain, and that they will not be disturbed during the meeting. Please also ensure microphones are turned off unless speaking and cameras are turned off unless speaking or requesting to speak. When invited to speak, turn your camera on, unmute yourself and check that your screen is surrounded by a red box before speaking. Can I ask officers supporting the meeting to introduce themselves, themselves giving their name and job title? Thank you. I'm Jess Tamplin, Democratic Services Support Officer. Karen and Sue, if you could please turn your cameras on. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Karen Hayes and I'm the Head of Corporate Finance. Good evening, my name is Sue Bader and I'm the Asset Manager. Uh, thank you, um, colleagues. And um, Jess, this, yes, that's, that's everyone, isn't it? Yeah. OK, so item one then, do we have any apologies for absence, please? No, um, so items one, was apologies for absence and item two is disclosures of interest and whipping declaration. Item three are minutes. So we're going to take all of those um, together with the introductions of uh, councillors. So please can I ask panel members when called upon by the Democratic Services Officer to confirm the ward that they represent, if they have any declarations of interest to make, if they have any whipping declarations to make and if they approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Firstly, we have not received any apologies for absence because I can see everyone's here. So if we can go through the elected members, please. Thank you, Councillor Ayling, please. Hello, my name is Councillor Ayling. I'm the ward uh, member for uh, Bewbush and Broadfield North. I agree the minutes of the last meeting. I have no declaration of interest and I've no, no whipping um, or been lobbied or anything. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lanza. Good evening. Oh. Okay. Um. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Bob Lanza, uh, Pound Hill South and Worth Councillor. I approve the last minutes and I have no declarations of interest to make. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lennon. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Lennon. I'm a councillor for Broadfield. I have no whipping declarations or declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the previous meeting of this scrutiny panel. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Morgale. Good evening, Maureen Morgale, Till Gate award. I uh, have no declarations to make. I wasn't at the last meeting. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. I've not been lobbied. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Peck, please. Uh, 
A very good evening. My name is Councillor Peck, um, Councillor for Maidenbow. Um, I have no declarations of interest and I approve the uh, minutes of the last uh, meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you colleagues for introducing yourselves and that takes us to item four which is background information reviews by other local authorities. At our last meeting we requested that officers um, look for similar uh, local authorities to Crawley in the context of council and neighbourhood parades and from in one context as, as well to see if we can secure a witness uh, from one of those other local authorities to question them on their management of their council and neighbourhood parades and in another context really to explore any reviews they that they had over undertaken. So what we have here at their part of the agenda pack are reviews conducted by Slough Borough Council and Knowsley uh, Borough Council. We've also been in touch with the quorum to sort of the, um, seek information from them or, or, and or a witness, but we haven't um, heard we haven't heard back from them so far. So the, the two reviews for which we do have information, they, um, we see in both cases a substantial neighbourhood parade presence and um, a review really looking at the same kind of issues we often, can, often consider in Crawley, such as the balance of trades on the parade, how to influence that balance of trades, the maintenance of the parade areas, whose responsibility it is, whether it be the council or the lessee, how to uh, assist newcomers to, to business to set up on those parades, uh, the importance of um, securing what we call um, convenience um, uh, goods and stores, so basic necessities on the parades and ensure that they're present, as well as comparison goods, goods that you, you don't have to buy uh, quite, quite as often. And also classic kind of um, concerns and points of view around the preponderance or presence or whatever of uh, non-essential trades and also I suppose around health and environmental impacts of, of some outlets such as um, uh, hot food takeaways and the like. So many of the issues that that we would be discussing in Crawley. So what I'm going to do um, is to invite our councillors, members of the panel. Do you have any observations on either of those reviews that have come out of uh, out of Slough, out of uh, Knowsley Borough Councils. Can I just check that with you, please? Can you indicate by turning on your screen? Uh, Councillor Lundell. Thanks. I mean, I can't promise to have read every single page of, of all of those reports. That was fairly hefty appendices that we were sent, but um, I did read as much of it as I, as I could manage. I'd, I'd agree with your summary of it, uh, Bob. It was, it was a very good summary. I think my main the thing that struck me is the big difference possibly certainly with Nolsey which I didn't even know the makeup of Nolsey but Nolsey is a collection of quite a bit smaller towns Slough maybe is a bit similar but I don't know and it's not I don't quite know how that's made up obviously our parades are very much linked to the neighbourhoods and I'm not sure that's necessarily true and the neighbourhood identity I'm not sure that's necessarily exactly the same with with Nolsey and with Slough certainly Nolsey they also had lots of talks about antisocial behaviour which although a, a concern obviously for us as a council is probably not the, the the leading concern for us as a councillor when we're carrying out this review, but otherwise the questions around how much control do we put over the different kinds of shops and, and other businesses that are set up on the parade is, is sort of prevalent in their reports as well. So I guess that's something for us to consider, but at the same time, you know, a, a, other things to notice is that Slough's parades are entirely managed by a, a sort of an outsourced company by the look of it which is not something that Crawley Borough Council does and um, uh, Knowsley is more similar to us in that sense so those are extra things that we could consider if we wanted to but whether we actually want to is probably the, the first question to get to. Uh, thank you, thank you Councillor Lund. Um, are there any any other comments from colleagues? I think we can um, 
consider the, the, the comments raised by Councillor London. I did have a, a few myself, there's no one that's indicated. I just I just meant to flag these as potential areas for further investigation. And um, I'm going to refer to page 14 of the Slough report. And I, I just wonder if we could do some more work on usage, usage classes on the parades. I mean, for example, what I mean by that is A1 is convenience products and foods. Uh, A3, A3 is hot food takeaway, but there are other classes like A4, A5. Are we being sufficiently discreet in the, the way we categorise outlets and how easy uh, do we or difficult do we make it to change usage class and is our policy uh, the right one in, in that respect? And if I can go to page um, and bear with me, please. I think these are quite important points that we could we could usefully usefully look at. Page 43 and, and other parts of the Slough report refer to the idea of what are acceptable trades uh, versus desirable trades versus for, be, for want of a better word, undesirable trades and, and to what extent we should adopt those kind of principles. Um, and in the same vein, on page 45, whether there would be scope in a revised policy uh, for incentives for, for certain types of trades in the interest of maintaining balance on, on the neighbourhood parades. Page 46 of the Slough report notes the existence of regular questionnaires of um, parade tenants, lessees. And again, I, I wonder if that's something we could um, con consider. Page 47, in terms of the balance of trades on a parade, whether we could consider a, a non A1 limit, that is, um, have a limit to the number of units on a parade that, that were not, con not convenience uh, products. And I want to go just flip forward, there's not many more, to page 62. And um, whether we can provide even greater clarity over who is responsible for what in terms of uh, repairs and maintenance on the parades, in terms of the split of responsibility between uh, tenants and the, and the council. Page 63, particularly pertinent right now, still on the Slough report, is around the, the nature of uh, the various reliefs and grants that are available, particularly in the um, kind of uh, COVID world and even in the pre pre existing reliefs that were available uh, pre COVID, whether we should do more to inform about that. Um, page 69 of Slough, um, and it's touched on in Nosley as well, introduces ideas of healthy food and environmental impact. And um, so, really, there's a question around whether we should be looking at that, at that area of policy in terms of the mix. On the on the parades. So I'm just going to go to page 70 and, and onwards. Um, there's a remark here in the Snell report about the availability of commercial waste services. Do we have something equivalent here and um, for the neighbourhood parades specifically for them? And do we publicise that? Uh, page 71, security. And I think we'll come to this with our first witness session. But really, a general question about the coverage of CT CCTV that we had across our, our parades. Uh, I'm just going to um, 76, no, no, 77. There's an interesting idea here about helping prepare new lessees, new tenants for the parades, and that, that's this concept of a retail academy, whether it be our own or something that we can signpost uh, people too. I just thought that was an interesting idea to help um, help new tenants. And I think I'm just going to page 81 now. And there's a there's a kind of charter concept here in this report around for responsible retailers, which could apply in the sense of health and um, environmental. Uh, considerations. And I mentioned these environmental considerations because only yesterday evening we had the final report of the climate change um, scrutiny panel. So I think it's um, quite a topical point to 
to make. And, um, and also, I think a further investigation as per page 99 of the report here around the operation of Masonette's flats associated with the shops. And I note that if we were to merely transfer the, these units of accommodation to uh, Crawley Homes, then of course they could be lost under right to buy. But I do wonder if it's possible to take a further look at that and uh, to see if they could be, if there's any way of temporarily achieving a transfer to registered social landlords if they're not in use by a parade tenants. So those, those are my comments and um, I've got Councillor Ailing, please come in. Hello. Um, yes. Um, well, my comment is that I can't remember what training it was, whether it was when I was on licensing or whether it was when I was on planning. But in some of the training I did, I can remember them saying that we couldn't um, couldn't stop people applying to um, take over a tenancy of a shop, say even if they were doing the same thing as next door. So if you had fish and chips already on the parade and somebody else wanted to go in there that was vacant, that was doing fish and chips, there was nothing we could do to stop them because if there wasn't enough trade, they'd go bust. Or if there was enough trade, they, they'd, um, you know, they'd make enough money to live. Um, so the trade would, would make that judgment for us. And that's why we've got so many coffee shops and that's why we've got so many like well we used to have a lot of jewelers at one point and then they went and now we've got lots of coffee shops we used to have lots of shoe shops at one point and you know that's how it goes one minute it's a lot of shoe shops next minute it's a lot of jewelers next minute it's a lot of coffee shops when they you get too many of something they start going away and something else comes back a bit like circle of life i suppose um but so how do we how do we stop, say we've got a curry house already at the parade, how do we stop another curry shop from taking over the lease if we can't do that? Yeah, thank you for that. And just um, before I bring Sue, Sue Bader in, um, thank you for that, that question. It's a very important point, Councillor Ailing, and I think it's important to, to realise we have several roles with respect to the parades. We have that, that of landlord, that of a planning authority and that of a licensing authority and I'm sure Sue will, will elaborate on what, what our powers are in that area. Sue. Uh, yes, um, yes, as, as Councillor Lanz is saying, yes, it's completely right. We, the council wears lots of different hats. Um, so obviously uh, Councillor Ailing was referring to licensing and planning and they are two hats that we wear. Uh, from a planning point of view, um, often there's, there used to be a requirement to have um, planning consent for change of use and the planners uh, possibly couldn't refuse consent for a change of use from say um, um, a butcher to a fish and chip shop. Um, and in, in terms of licensing, um, if, if a particular use needed a license, then again, our, my licensing colleagues may have had difficulty in uh, refusing uh, to grant the license. Um, we also wear the hat of, of landlord, um, and that is often the way that we can control the use on a parade. Um, the, the leases that the tenants occupy the properties under um, have specific user clauses. So um, a, a lease will say, a tenant may use the shop for um, a fish and chip shop, or it may say the lease, can, lease says the tenant can use a shop for a butcher, or even, it might be even be specific and say a halal butcher. Um, and that is the way that we do control the use on a parade um, so that we can either um, allow the to the best of our ability a mix of users on the parade, or if, if there's a particular user which we're, we're, we're not keen on because we have a sufficient of that particular type of user on the parade, or it is a user which um, maybe in consultation with the ward councillors, we think it's not a use which should be on that parade, 
um, as landlord, we, we are able to say no to that, whereas it may have been that our planning and licensing colleagues uh, would not have been so so able to say so. So could I also just say, um, Councillor Lanz, Lanz was talking about the use classes um, and, and A1 and A2 and A3. Um, the, these use classes have just been thrown out of the window as from September last year. Um, there has been a change to uh, use classes um, such that there's now a use class of E, which covers most uh, use classes on the parade, um, with the exception of takeaways, which are now a sui generis use, which means uh, they're, they're, they're not specified in any particular use. The purpose of having it, the, the takeaways sui generis is so that um, we can actually, the planners can actually control the number of takeaways on a parade, um, which might be said to be perhaps a good thing um, and is, and therefore would not be just limited to how we could control the number of takeaways on the parade um, under our landlord function. Thank you very much, Sue. And I just, just comment um, that um, um, the, the three hats there that Sue referred to, the third hat, that of landlord, illustrates why it's so important, in my opinion, for the council to retain control of its uh, neighbourhood parades, otherwise you lose that landlord function. Um, Councillor Morgan, please. Councillor, you're muted. You're muted. Is um, just to add on to what you're saying about the, the classes, is also to look at how how do we encourage back the traditional traders, uh, you know, say like butchers or fishmongers or you know chemists. We, we just lost the post office in Tilgate. Um, there was I think there's a butcher that came up in Farnes Green, and the excitement on social media from you know Farnes Green and and Tilgate and surrounding um, you know wards of of having a, a butchers there. You know, it, it it actually showed that um, maybe the, the you know good old fashioned traditional traders should be coming back in, and especially now with COVID and people not travelling far to do their shopping, and you know more shopping is being done you know in, in the nearby you know shops. So maybe we should look at that as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Mogali. Uh, Sue Bader, would you like to come in on on that just on? It's just an extension of the point we were just discussing, really. Uh, yeah, yes, we, we're also very delighted to have a butcher on Furnace Parade. We've also got um, a butcher from South on Southgate Parade has also moved into a bigger shop, so that that's also excellent news. Um, so there does seem to be a resurgence of uh, the, the more traditional um, users on on the parade. Um, unfortunately, we, you know, when we have a shop to let, and we've obviously will have 17 tillgate to let later on this year, um, we can only put it out to the market um, and to see what offers come in. Um, it, it is difficult for us to particularly target, um, say, a greengrocer or a butcher or um, a, a use which is not on the parade. Um, if if that offer doesn't come forward from someone, um, it's obviously beneficial. We, we we look very carefully when offers come in. We look very carefully at um, the users which come forward, uh, coupled with the rent. And it's it's often not the highest rent that we take. It's it's the use the, for us. It's the use which is the most important one. Obviously, income is important for us as well. So it's getting that balance between a use and the rent, um, which will you know, benefit the whole of the parade is, is what we're after. Thank you, Sue Bader and Councillor Mugali, please. Can I please just come back on that? It's just a, 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 a thought is how far or wide do you do you advertise or where do you advertise? So if, if say, we, we were, you know, looking for a butcher or green grocers. Um, you know, would we? How 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 do you target the, the advertising? Would you, you know, are there spe specific places you go to? Oh, I, I don't know. Just just asking. Thank you, uh, Sue Bader. Please on that. Uh, 
Uh, yes, when we have a property let, um, we do that through Graves Jenkins, who are obviously a, a Crawley uh, commercial agent. Um, so they will have a website um, and the, the property will go there. Um, so if people can, can have a look. We also have a list of uh, people who have expressed interest in property and we, we keep details, um, people's details. And when we have a property to let, we, we go through our list um, and contact or, or pass through to Graves Jenkins the details of those people who have expressed an interest in opening up a, a shop on one of Crawley's parades. Um, so, so that's how we do it. And I mean, that that is pretty usual in the market as to how um, someone would advertise a retail property uh, for, for let. Um, and I think if if we have um, someone who is, is looking to open up a, a retail shop, you know, one would hope that they would approach all the res all the local agents um, and to see what they had available. Obviously, uh, we've also got the, the business through our economic development um, arm. We have uh, business uh, appointed um, or we, we can point people in, in, in the right direction in terms of uh, business startups and we can we can then point them in the direction of Graves Jenkins or, or through to us um, and then to Graves Jenkins. So we, we cover it as, as best as we can. We obviously, um, local people uh, are the ones who, who are being are benefited most by the fact that we are using Graves Jenkins, who are a, a local firm. Thank you. Thank you, Sue Bader. And um, Marion, did you want to, sorry, Councillor Ayling, your, your uh, camera came on. Did you want to come in? Mary, Councillor Ayling, you're muted. Yeah. Sorry, I keep forgetting. Um, yeah, I put my camera on because I misunderstood advertising. Um, I thought it, she meant advertising what was at the shops because um, I didn't I, I didn't know that Southgate had a butcher's until I was canvassing one day and I saw it there and I thought, oh, and, the, and it looked nice. And I went in, I bought some steak and it was lovely. Um, and now if I fancy a piece of steak, I, I drive all the way to Southgate to get it. Um, and I thought that was the advertising she was talking about because a lot of places don't know that there's a local greengrocers or butchers just in the next neighbourhood that they could perhaps visit rather than go into town or go to Tesco's. Um, but that's up to the shop, I suppose, not not up to the house, up to the council. So when I sort of realised that I'd got got it wrong, I put my camera back down. So that was all I was going to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I mean, I, I, I just checked through Sue. I bit, we had a discussion offline about um, renewing the free uh, online advertising for our neighbourhood parades, didn't we? Can you comment on that, please? Sue, thanks. Uh, yes, that's something that we are we are doing. Um, we're having conversations with our colleagues in IT. Uh, in terms of, of getting that back up and running again. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a work in progress uh, to get all the right new information there. Great, thank you. I, th I think that'll be very good. Yeah, helpful. thank you. It wasn't such a silly question then. OK, thank you. No, no, that was, no, that was a good point to raise. Thank you. And uh, I, have, I don't see any more indications on this item four. So can I just check that we're, we're OK for the, the points raised to have a little bit of further work done on them. I raised several questions on the two reports, as did other members. So are we OK with that? If you're not OK, indicate and we'll take a vote. Right, OK. Thank, thank you very much, colleagues. So item five, we're going on to our first witness session and we are going, we're going to welcome, I think it's going to be Kate Wilson, who's going to present some information on crime and safety at and around our neighbourhood parades. This is something we requested at our last meeting. So we welcome Kate Wilson. Uh, please, um, thanks for joining us, Kate. You're, you're on. Thank you very much. Jay. Good evening, everyone. Um, so, yeah. I thought I'd just give a little bit of background in terms of 
crime antisocial behaviour. Um, I, I, I'm here uh, representing um, obviously community services division, which um, is, is home to our community safety function as well as our community wardens. So hopefully I can sort of give that overview from both a sort of strategic and an operational perspective. Um, and as well, we do um, have a, a positive relationship with, with the police. Um, so I'm able just to give a little bit of an update on their behalf as well, um, albeit there'll be a limit to, to what detail I can go into, but obviously would be very happy to take away um, anything else that you may wish to, to know uh, from police colleagues. So I, I think just to, um, you know, I, I've um, had a read through all of the all of the information, particularly some of the comments that were, were provided uh, by, by residents on the on the uh, Facebook pages um, and have been specifically mentioned. So I think what we would typically say is that we don't um, particularly see a specific issue at, um, at, at particular um, so Generally, um, I, I think um, the situation most of our neighbourhood parades but there have been you know patches of, of issues that, that we as the council along with our police colleagues have had to, to deal with um, particularly um, last year so we would say that the main issues that we've experienced that we've been alerted to have been around um, general nuisance behaviour um, that have implicated um, small sections of our street homeless community not exclusively but that's where we've seen um, some of that activity and what we've been able to do as um, organisations is use our collective um, powers, uh, antisocial behaviour powers that are contained within the um, um, 2014 Act particularly, and obviously other surrounding um, legislation as well. Members will also be aware that in October last year, uh, we extended um, our public space protection order around alcohol consumption as well. Uh, which is also another really useful tool in, in, in addressing nuisance and, and antisocial behaviour, particularly where, where alcohol is concerned. And I did note within the comments on the Facebook page that, that, um, that, that concerns are largely around sort of consumption of alcohol and, and drug use and, and drug dealing on the, on the parades. Um, so I'm pleased to say that actually the community wardens have uh, prioritised neighbourhood parades um, from autumn um, last year where we've been able to have a much um, sort of strongly done joint and a real noticeable difference in how we can address issues at, at places like Langley Green Parade, for example. So um, we also um, are part of a multi-agency group, a uh, joint action group, the JAG, which meets on a monthly basis, which is ourselves, police and other agencies where we share intelligence and can actually work together to address um, issues that, that may arise in specific locations. So I, I think on that basis that the, the, the sort of the structures are in place to allow us to respond um, fairly um, strongly to any issue. But I think that ultimately um, points to where we need to work collectively and we're so reliant on intelligence and, um, you know, and, and the public and um, those businesses that are, that are working from the parades to share intelligence with us to report, 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 because um, without that, it's really difficult for us and the police to know that there's actually an issue. When it plays out on social media, it doesn't always get into the places it needs to go to. So that, that would be my one one um, plea is that, that we just encourage, you know, reporting, um, you know, when, when things are happening. So I, I don't know if there's um, any specific um, questions on that particular part. I was also sort of wanting just to sort of make reference to the proactive work that our neighbourhood services team undertake as well. Um, you'll know that we're working in, in patches of which the neighbourhood parades are part of. Um, so we're, we're very much um, working uh, to keep the parades litter free. Um, to make sure that we uh, provide inviting and safe green spaces and also proactive removal of graffiti as well because we're really aware that, that the graffiti can give people a sense that, that, that there are problems within their, within their area. Um, we've also been very proactive in targeting fly tipping. I know that there's been some significant issues at, at Langley Green Parade, for example. So um, we've had some real successes there um, in investigating those and um, inviting people to remove the fly tipping that, that, that they have left. And also we've um, used the powers that we have available to us to prosecute as well. Um, so again, there's some, been some collective successes um, across teams working together 
and and as I say, working um, on joint patrols with the police where it's appropriate to to, to really um, have a presence and to, to disrupt some of that that antisocial and nuisance behaviour. So um, yeah, if, if um, you, you have any questions, Chair, you or the panel. Well, well, thank you very much, Kate, for presenting the um, the work that your your teams are doing there. So I, I now invite uh, members of the panel. Have you any questions? If so, please uh, turn on your camera. Right. Um, I've got Councillor Peck, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Very good evening to you, Kate. Um, and thank you for the introduction uh, uh, this evening. Um, most of the questions that I get answered is is around do with AESB antisocial behaviour, um, not just within Crawley, but within the parades um, that that we see or hear. There are many resources for um, shopkeepers to report antisocial, be it by telephone, by email, report it to you, etc. Have you sort of um, within your team um, thought of maybe um, going and looking at um, video evidence, i.e., maybe if, the, if there's a, if there's a, a, an appetite uh, to have um, some form of CCTV where there where parades do not have that, if not mono, if not um, monitored lively, but maybe used from an evidential point of view when things do happen in the evening and things are not reported to you. Um, have you have you sort of maybe gone down that line or how we can better provide that information uh, to the police, uh, to the council uh, with a view of catching these perpetrators, uh, especially with a fly tipping? I would imagine that the information that that enable you to prosecute was through good intelligence. And I'm thinking that if we had good intelligence by using a video a CCTV, that could also help. But of course, there, there would be a cost implication to that. So m maybe if you could sort of um, help me with that, that, that would be appreciated. Thank you, Councillor Peck. Uh, Kate Wilson, please. Thanks very much, Chair. Yes, thank you, uh, Councillor Peck. Uh, so CCTV is obviously a really useful tool um, in, in combating um, nuisance and antisocial behaviour, albeit you've, you've already acknowledged that one of the, 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 the things that we need to think about before we increase our stock is the cost. There's not only the capital outlay, but obviously the on onward um, revenue implications as well, uh, as well in terms of licensing um, and the like. Um, and, and also it's as um, the problem that we often have, particularly at night time and obviously for those that are more savvy, as soon as a faith is covered, it makes it incredibly difficult to link, um, you know, somebody um, necessarily to, to that crime. You might be lucky um, if it's somebody that's a, a little bit more um, naive in that sense where you can maybe get a car number plate or, or or, or somebody you know that doesn't think to cover their face but it does have its limitations so um, I, I think uh, as a move forward we would probably not commit to fixed infrastructure I think there's potentially a place for um, mobile CCTV um, but again you just need to, to be mindful that it won't necessarily be a fix all uh, and sometimes it just pushes the problem elsewhere um, but OK, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, any any other panel members with any questions? Um, I'll, I'll ask one, I think. Um, how how um, confident are you that we're we're kind of on top of the litter situation across our parades? Did you hear that? Yes, I'm sorry. I think is my connection a little bit patchy this evening? OK, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> So no, I did hear that Councillor Lambs uh, uh, um, Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, yes, just about, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Sorry. So based on the information that's coming through to us, uh, through to the community wardens and, and what's being described at the joint action group with the police, um, our understanding is that yes, um, we are aware of the key issues and we are addressing them. But uh, as I say, sometimes when concerns play out on social media, um, that, that information doesn't always draw across. And obviously, if it's not logged in, in the systems, it then doesn't raise as a priority. So all I would urge is if people think, oh, well, I've, I've you know, I've, 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 I've put it in the case. It's just important in the moment when things are happening that, that people either use, you know, obviously if it's a crime to call 999, um, if it's um, otherwise through either 101 or, or for people to contact the community wardens within their hours, which are eight in the morning till 9.30 at night, seven days a week, um, because that allows us to build the picture. So I'm, I'm quietly confident, but, um, um, but without, without any more information, um, I wouldn't change my view on that. We mentioned CCTV just now. What What is the extent of the coverage of CCTV? I mean, are there gaps without naming them? Are there some parades without it? I, I, I genuinely don't know. Um, I actually don't have that information with me, Councillor Lanza, but I'll certainly endeavour to go away and find out our, our coverage. OK, and, and if there is, and I, I understand the limitations you point to, but I just wondered if there's any correlation between the existence of the coverage and the level of incidents. I mean, that that was the basis of the of the question, really. So uh, and also, um, I don't know if you know this, but one either. But um, when we when we uh, admit a new tenant, do we as a matter of course provide all of these contact details that you've referred to? Did, did you hear that? Yeah. Uh, sorry, Councillor Lanz, which, which um, contact details what were you like referring to? Do we proactively provide to new tenants all of these um, uh, communications channels like the community wardens? Sure. So um, again, I would have to um, liaise with, with colleagues in, in Crawley Homes uh, and in, in the asset team, you know, depending on whether it's a residential property or, or a commercial Property, but I think again, if it's not, then that's something that we ought to, to be doing. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other members, please indicate. I, I'm not, I'm not picking up many actions out of this, but I think one of the actions from this, nevertheless, would be to try and find out more about perceptions of crime and antisocial behaviour through our consultation. So and that's later on the agenda, the public consultation that we're going to engage in. So I really think there should be some questions framed around this topic. Um, um, if it, uh, are we OK with that panel to do that? I assume so. No one's no one's objecting. Kate. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Lanz. I just thought it was probably um, opportune to mention that um, obviously um, the, the Borough Council is part of the, the Safer Crawling Partnership, um, which is a strategic body again with various statutory agencies. Um, we're actually about uh, more broadly across the town around um, fear of crime and, um, and, and crime itself. So I'm just wondering whether there's an opportunity uh, to, you know, cross over rather than to competing. Right. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Indeed. Yeah. 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 I think that's that's a that's a fair point. Yeah. The Safer Crawley Partnership has been around for quite a while, after all. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ailing, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Again, in some training I was, I did. I can't remember if it, what what panel I was on, but I was on the crime panel, so it could have been that. Um. We did part of the training was that we had to write down how the people in that area perceived crime and they said Bewbush and we thought that people perceived crime as being high in Bewbush and the fear of crime was high and yet it wasn't it was actually quite low and in Pound Hill the perception was quite high they were quite fearful of crime in Pound Hill and so it was the opposite to what you would expect. So um, 
it'd be interesting to find out whether that's changed because that was when I was a new councillor, which was a long time ago now. Um, so yeah, I would say it'd be good to get the, the, the um, residents' perception of crime and how fearful they are of crime and um, as part of the consultation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you councillor. Um, I'm going to bring in councillor Mugali now, please. Um, oh. Um, I'm not sure whether I might have missed. I might have missed it. Is the use of cameras? Is are, are they is, is are they reported back to to the police or to the council? Who, who's got who's got the data? And uh, over to Kate Wilson. Thanks very much, Chair. So um, the, the network of cameras, um, as far as I understand it, are linked in uh, to um, Sussex Police HQ at, at Lewis. So in terms of, of that that um, responsibility for the, the footage, that, that would um, sit with them. But obviously we work in partnership with them. But what I'll be able to do is, is um, go away from this meeting and actually find the detail of that infrastructure and, and which cameras are placed where. OK, thank you. Thank you, Kate. And um, any other any other panel member? Any questions on this? No, I don't see any. Well, in that case, Kate, thank thank you very much for joining us this evening and for taking on board those those actions for additional information for the panel. And uh, yeah, that's, you, you're getting a uh, quite a lot of scrutiny this week, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you. Um, and our next witness this evening is um, Councillor Peter Smith, who is the Cabinet Member for Planning and Economic Development, which is um, a position I um, briefly held. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah, welcome, Peter. And uh, I invite you, first of all, to make any statement you'd like to the panel uh, about your role, particularly with reference to the neighbourhood parades. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for the introduction. Um, yes, I think the the whole question of neighbourhood parades is, is an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's an intrinsic part of our new town design uh, in that all of certainly the older neighbourhoods are based around a parade and, and many of us have um, lived in Crawley for a long time and perhaps like me, I remember when my daughter was born in 1984, I, I gave up work to look after her and I used to put her in a pushchair and, and go to Pounds Hill South Parade to buy vegetables and green grocery put by foot. And I used to go to Gales Drive to buy home baked bread or fresh baked bread on the parades. Whereas nowadays we see a completely different mix in, in our parades. So, we, we we have certain challenges in terms of all the issues around the parade, similar to the way we're looking at the town overall in terms of we're moving, we've moved into the 21st century and we're looking forward now post COVID into an internet connected world with online shopping, death of the high street, etc. And we need to still at the same time look at and protect these precious assets that are our parades. And one thing I note coming out of, of COVID is there's, there's a lot more talk and focus on the neighbourhood um, and having the neighbourhood parade close to where you live so you can access it by foot rather than needing to drive everywhere. And, and, and people are starting to think again about what, what they should have on the parades. Um, the policies that we use or that Sue and the team use were put in before I became the cabinet member. In fact, I think, Bob, it was probably when you were leader of the council. Um, and so the question I, I ask is how do we measure the success or otherwise of our parades? And I think there was certainly I noticed in the Slough report uh, a big issue there, which I know she didn't draw out, Bob, but a big issue around occupancy rates in Slough. Um, our rates in Crawley, I think, are that we have very normally have very few empty use, units. I think it's in 
the ones and twos quite often, and, and Sue will correct me if I'm wrong. So I think in, in, in one sense, that's that's quite a good measure of the um, success of our parades. Uh, it means that people um, are using them uh, sufficiently enough for the people in the that occupy the units to make their living, presumably. Um, uh, but at the same time, we see we see change all around us. Um, I think it was called Hobgoblin in uh, Northgate, closed down after many many years. I think it was actually a county-wide uh, vendor of, of musical instruments, etc. But time is moving on things are changing and we we tend to want convenience stores fast food stores um, and things like that on our parades we also i observe we, we we have parades that are quite different in their makeup so for example our most successful parades which i believe are langley green and tilgate are much bigger than parades like um, pound hill south or indeed um, some of the private parades like uh, Main Bower or um, the, the other one in Pounds Hill that are, are completely private. So we need to make sure that we're also comparing like with like when we look at these different uh, models of operation. Um, the last opening comment I would like to make is around the um, cost of financing the parades. And the, the, the latest figure we have or I have is for the income from the parades in uh, financial year 1920 was just over three million pounds. Now, when we look at our net budget of 15.8 million pounds for 2021, we need to start looking at how we deal with our parades and particularly how we look at rents in the context of three million pounds contribution towards an overall budget of 15.8 million. Many of us and many of our um, older residents have typically expected that the council's always there to look after them and sort things out, which usually means pay for things when they wanted it. Uh, I was seeing that with the adventure playgrounds discussion that's going on and the other changes to the level of service we're providing at the moment. But we do need to be careful to, to support Sue Vader and the team in this very delicate balancing act of trying to get the right sort of businesses on the parades at, at an affordable rent and by affordable I mean a rent that the tenant can afford to pay his bills or her bills and to make a profit and also to provide a service that the uh, that the taxpayer that the voters that we want um, I think I'll be quiet now, Chair. Thank you for letting me make a few comments. Thank you, uh, Councillor Big Smith. Um, yeah, I'll just make one comment. Um, the, the, the current policy came in two years before I came. The, the <laughs> I'm, I'm nitpicking, obviously, but it's just... I just fair say, enough, fair enough. Say for the record, but I do agree with your comments about the high level of, of occupancy um, since that policy came in and indeed even even before before that it has been remarkably high compared to the, the reports that you referred to. Um, can I just invite any uh, other uh, members of the panel if they'd like to make any comments or put any questions to Councillor Peter Smith? I've got um, Councillor Lunnan please. Uh, thank you for your uh, opening statement Councillor Smith. Uh, I guess my first comment is, and this is me not knowing much about planning, is what is the, you know, the neighbourhoods are a great success, I think everybody would say, as evidenced by the occupancy and everybody's love for them. What requirement was there around Forge Wood around uh, a parade? Obviously, that's a new build neighbourhood and obviously it might be over time if, if obviously there won't be any more new build neighbourhoods directly in Crawley unless we expand our borders but if we do expand our borders sort of east of Ifield would be the west of Ifield even uh, would be the logical place where there's a big possible development going in what kind of uh, policies do we have around requirements for a parade of shops because from what I've seen of Forgewood although I don't know the fine details there doesn't seem to be one there which actually seems to me to be a shame but that might have all been discussed when that was all passing through planning which is unfortunately before my time as a councillor so that's my opening gambit. Uh, Councillor Smith, please. Thank you very much, Tim. Um, 
I, I, I'd need to check the absolute facts of that and I don't want to mislead anybody. Um, the, the Forge Wood development was came to us by a slightly unusual route in that the Secretary of State approved it in principle without going through the planning process and that came with um, a different set of conditions than one might have expected if it had gone through the, the local plan review process, ma matching our policies and, and got proper uh, outline planning permission in the normal way or the more normal way. Um, I believe nonetheless that it does have uh, allocation in there for um, a parade of some sorts because we expect developments within our town, particularly larger ones like that, to conform to the neighbourhood principles because we all feel and the local plan feels that the whole neighbourhood approach to town planning brought in in 1947, I think it was, was a terrific success and Crawley is a model of the success of that planning process. Um, but there are complexities to do in Forgewood to do with the consortium that have got to fund it or uh, they, they've got a primary school, I think, but there are discussions around other services as well. And But they are, I think, in the master plan. But I, if, if you want a 100% accurate answer, I'll have to go away to talk to officers and get that prepared for you. Councillor Lunnan, did you want to come back on that? Yes, please. Yeah. Well, I mean, one further question. Obviously, it's, it's intriguing to know our local plan has feelings, but that's a that's good to know. Um, uh, my other question was, and it's something that Bob's already pulled out of one of the other reports, is there are quite a lot of, in certain reports, certainly the Slough report, um, talk about restrictions of changing of use from A1 to A234, et cetera, et cetera. Now, again, I'm not a planning board. I've never served on planning. Um, do we have similar protections in place at the moment in Crawley or is it something you think would be a good thing to look at us doing on the neighbourhood parades from a planning perspective? Obviously, as, as we've discussed earlier, we have certain, you know, with our landlord hat, we can affect things in a different way as well. But um, we can, of course, use the planning route to, to make sure the planning policy agrees with what our landlord policy is as well. Yeah, thank you, Tim. I, I think Sue Vader already uh, clarified that to some extent for us, didn't she, when she mentioned the new use class E. Um, I, there did used to be some complexities around use classes on the parade, but I think it's a lot simpler now. But I think the real question is, and I have alluded a little to it earlier, is even if you had absolute control of, of what type of occupancy you had, how would you choose to exercise that? Because People will tell you and you and especially if you look at Facebook, you'll learn all the interesting things about how they desperately need a greengrocer. But if you it's it's difficult to see greengrocers that survive because greengrocers need customers to go across the threshold when uh, many of us jump in the car and buy everything down at um, Lidl or at Sainsbury's or whatever. So um, we, Sue and the team had to do a very delicate balancing act between the right type of business to keep it uh, fitting up against the other occupancies on the parades. So you, and for example, the takeaways, I had, I had complaints from um, a, a chip shop operator when another type of takeaway was applying to, to occupy an empty unit on on, on the parade. So how do you balance that out? Whose side do you take? Um, we have to be careful how, how we interfere in that, but I believe that the actual planning process itself is, is more of a neutral element in it these days. Uh, but Sue will put a camera on and put me put you all right if I've got that wrong. But the, the more interesting question actually, with all due respect, is how do we balance the these various uses up? Uh, the, the, the other Typical example is is uh, betting offices where lots of people have different views about that, um, but uh, we, we have to let betting offices um, go in if they if can justify it. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Um, any other panel members um, to comment or ask a question of Councillor Smith? OK, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try a few if that's OK. Um, 
I mean, I've just make an observation. I, I do think that with the, the pandemic, there's been a renewed emphasis shown by some people to try and shop local. And there might be an op opportunity there in terms of the what we have on the neighbourhood parades. And I, I just wondered if, um, if you felt there were any lessons we could learn from the pandemic that would be beneficial to implement on a more permanent basis in respect of neighbourhood parades policy. Yeah, that's a good point, Councillor Lanza. Um, yeah, there are. I need to declare interest first. I'm a uh, Labour and Cooperative Councillor and I have a co-op on my local parade and uh, I'm also of a certain age, so I've been trying to limit the amount of time I get close to other people um, as much as I can, which means I've tended to go to uh, my local co-op, make as few trips as possible. And, and try and get there. I've got the privilege of not being having a full time job, be able to get there when it's quiet. So and I, I, I perceive that many more people are doing that and you do see people they're doing um, online shopping and they're getting just um, the, the smaller necessities like your milk, or whatever your, your paper by going to your local parade. Um, some people and a lot of older people already do that anyway. That's their normal way of doing it. They don't have a car. They're not used to going to do the big weekly shop. Um, post COVID and, and it's also links into the, uh, the climate change emergency where we are looking at going forward to try and refocus on this buy local, shop local, and that meaning not just it within Crawley, but perhaps within your neighbourhood. And interestingly, Homes England, who as members will know, are proposing to build 10,000 homes on our border, are nonetheless still talking about adopting our neighbourhood principle, partly for transport reasons, to try and discourage people from using private cars to go and get their shopping to get their milk and their uh, fags or whatever uh, and to buy local. So yes, um, going through the pandemic, coming out the other side, I think we will, it will take a little while for things to settle back if it if ever does, but I think the people will, will keep that in mind, yes. Thanks, Councillor Smith. Just a, a, a further question on, on that really. Um, really looking at the, the Slough and the Nosley reports, and you, you touched on this yourself when you mentioned uh, betting shops. It, it does seem that in Nosley in, in particular, they've um, kind of taken a view about the health implications of certain trades, the environmental implications of certain trades, and perhaps in somebody else's terms, not mine, perhaps the morality of, of, of some trades. Now I'm at heart a kind of libertarian, so so like you, I wouldn't advocate a view we should try and stop people taking a flutter in a betting shop or taking a takeaway or all the rest of it. But do you feel there's anything in those reports that we could usefully influence in terms in, of environmental responsibility of, of tenants and the um, healthy food responsibilities of tenants. Do you think that's something we could usefully look at as a matter of policy while still being reasonably kind of libertarian? Well, you sure? Yes, I do really. Um, you've touched on it yourself, Councillor Lanza. There are various extremes into this discussion, aren't there? Some people think anything should be allowed and others, and I would count myself more at the other end of that spectrum, think that we should have um, fairness and justice and we should also have space for social measures. So if we do want to discourage on street drinking, then there's um, policies and procedures we, ne we, we need to have in place rather than allowing people to sell alcohol to anybody at any time, for example. Um, and, and we definitely do have social issues that, that do emerge. Um, healthy food is perhaps another one where we might want to have a policy of encouraging, I don't know, encouraging an organic green grocer or something in a similar way to a halal butcher, like we've got now a halal butcher in the, in the town centre. But I don't personally think it's, um, although I would like to see that, I don't think it's correct for uh, myself or, or the council to take it upon itself to impose uh, 
too many rules and regulations like that. I like you describe yourself as a libertarian. I'm certainly a libertarian in that sense, but we do need to have room to, to manage things in a way that um, allows us to have scope for social policy in the same way as we do with our investments, where if we want to take action on climate change, we are going to have to change people's behaviour or put in place policies and mechanisms that encourage people to rethink their behaviour and, and migrate to different behaviours. So yes, we do need to do that, but I think we need to do it in a way that does not take away people's freedoms in the same way as many of us have seen many of our freedoms taken away on the 1st of January. Thank you, Councillor Smith. I, I do agree with you. I think we've both got the right sense of balance on, on that point, but it's probably an area of policy uh, worth looking at, I think. Um, just uh, if I can ask you now uh, another question, which I might I might guess is a kind of audience boosting question. Um, <laughs> rents. OK, so you mentioned the amount of revenue that the council uh, derives from rents just over three million pounds per annum and the, the vital contribution that makes to running services, especially in recent times. Um, what's your view of the, the scope of looking at options for change in, in, in rental policy while maintaining a satisfactory um, revenue position to run our services? Are there any ideas out there that you've looked at or that you would consider looking at to 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 change that policy the way rents are calculated the way they're applied and in asking that question i will re-emphasize that that's not the only subject that this panel is concerned about yes thank you very thank you very much councillor lanza it's something I've personally given a lot of thought to, as you might expect, given the um, situation we've seen on one of our parades recently. Um, and, and it is a, a, a very challenging question because, uh, as I was saying earlier, even as recently as 10 years ago, our budgets looked completely different. And there was the possibility of looking at rearranging our our budget. One of the reasons I stand for election as a councillor and my party stands for election to control the council is so that we can effect policies that we think are good for the town and uh, good for the people that live in the town. But we find now that our budgets are trimmed back so much that as, as most people, certainly count the members on the call will know, we are having to reduce some of the services we provide next year, including activities like the um, activity playground, the adventure playgrounds, uh, cherished they are by many of our residents and certainly by some of our longer serving councillors and, and nobody likes to do that. So the first comment I would make about that is yes, I think it should be on the agenda, but we have to take very firmly in mind if we reduce any rent where are we going to find the funds to pay for that for because it's not a free thing to do we will have to reduce some other service we provide would we would we want to uh pulling ideas out there would we want to put up the cost to go into the hawth or to the leisure center in order to reduce the rent of a, of a shop on a certain parade I don't know the answer to that question. Um, a, a lot of people would have different views on it, that's for sure. Um, secondly, if we do do that or consider doing that, um, uh, operating at below market rent, which is effectively what we do at the moment, how would we compare that to the private sector parades, which we have several in town? Would we then have um, requests to subsidise those as well? And thirdly, how would we choose which rents we should subsidise and which ones we shouldn't? Now, we may want to put betting office rents up perhaps and reduce um, convenience store rents because we see, perceive them to be critical. But what about people that run a sewing shop or a fish and chip shop or something? How do we balance that? How do we have a fair policy to do that? So I think it is very challenging. I, I, I don't think it should be ruled out by any means, but as councillors, as the people that decide how the taxpayer's dollar is spent, 
we should start by saying, well, which taxpayer dollar are we not going to spend in order to change the rents that we're charging to, to a lower level? Um, thank you, Councillor Smith. I mean, you mentioned there, um, with, without using the exact term, the, the possibility of uh, differential rent, rents, but then, you know, you elaborated, it might be quite difficult to decide how and where to apply those differentials. But I mean, I think it's perhaps something for the panel to, to, to consider as part of its work. Um, are there any other, you know, Councillor Lunnan? Just, just to check, I mean, my understanding is that all rents are effectively differential because they're agreed at the time of the lease with the leaseholder and then they have variable increases that are sort of parade wide or, or is, is my understanding of it wrong? Thanks for that, Councillor Smith. If you'd like to respond on that. Yeah, again, I'll defer to Sue if I get this wrong, but my understanding is broadly the rents we set are based on the, the going rates in the market, in the, pro in the commercial property market. And we, um, we actually work with commercial agents to, to set that level. And there are certain uh, legal procedures that tenants can take, including going to court to get a, a judgment on whether we've set an appropriate level. But that is based on what the market will bear rather than uh, a rate that we've chosen to to put or to adopt that is lower than the market rent. I think we're free to charge as little as we want. I'm not sure, but I think we are. But certainly we we uh, the officers are charged with um, getting the best income they can can commensurate with a balanced um, occupancy on the parade and keeping full occupancy uh, and I must say they do Sue and the team do a fantastic job of that as I, as I mentioned earlier we we don't have many empty units and uh, usually they're snapped up. Okay thank you Councillor Smith are there any other questions from members of the panel at this stage? No, I don't see anyone. So what I'd like to suggest is really the kind of the themes in these questions that have, that have been put today, they're, they're, they're carried forward as it were into um, the, the work of the panel just to, to bring back on the on the next agenda. Um, if that if that's OK with colleagues, I don't want to exclude any train of thought that's been expressed. I don't see anyone indicating um, to the contrary, so I'll take that as, as being the case. The um, I, oh, Councillor Mogali. No, um, no, no, that's okay. I've changed my mind. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Um, item six is public consultation arrangements. Um, we're in a, a strange situation regarding public consultation. I mean, ordinarily, there would be, I suppose, what you would call a leafleting channel. Uh, for communication, but necessarily at the moment, any communication with the public will have a very substantial online element, possibly also the uh, community notice boards. But the purpose of um, this item is to kind of understand the, the sort of questions we'd like to ask uh, our residents and our tenants who may not always be residents, of course. Um, about our neighbourhood parade policy. And I suppose a comment I'd make at the outset is just a suggestion really is that a, a questionnaire going to our tenants ought to be kind of augmented in some way because I think the questions to the tenants would have a kind of a different slant, you know, in terms of their perception, for example, of how the parades are maintained, their, their, their feelings about the rent policy and, and the way it's applied in reality, uh, their views about the makeup of the parades and how we're filling the parades, um, their views on the, the way we advertise them, for example. And then it, from a resident perspective, it, it, it might be um, a slightly different set of questions if you're just a resident um, in terms of the value you place on the neighbourhood parades, what your view is of our neighbourhood parade policy generally. But I, you know, I welcome comments from panel members. I don't in intend that we finally script every question 
on an online meeting, but I am looking for suggestions and, and perhaps comments on what I've just said. And I invite officers to comment as well. Would someone like to start off? Councillor Long. Nearly always me first. Um, I think having different questionnaires for the different sort of constituent constituencies uh, is relatively sensible because obviously the the landlords will have um, different views to to the residents. So that that seems fairly um, uh, obvious. I mean, I, I suppose what we possibly want here, ironically, is an expert session from the the <laughs> the council's consultation department because the, 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 the council does actually run a fair number of consultations throughout a year so I imagine it's Alan Hambly and his team sort of run those consultations although I don't know for certain but presumably there's some people that have got quite good at it and can report on what consultations have gone well and which ones haven't and I think I seem to remember the uh, when we looked at reorganisation of the council's governance systems I think we had one response <laughs> entirely for, from scrutiny panel to, to the consultation so getting some useful input would help on that obviously we we very recently we had the best consultation ever in regards to the you know future plans of the council so it would seem that the council is doing quite a good job on consultations at the moment whether we want mm. specific themes of questions um I, i'd have to have a give us a chance to go away and think about that i suppose okay no thank you for that um by, by the way you uh, Councillor Lunning, you very you very slightly understated the response to the governance consultation. It, it was three times the number you said. It was three people. Just thought you'd like to know. That. <laughs> oh, fake news. <laughs> Myself, I apologise. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. So um, I learned today, in fact, that um, the the consultations officer. So so we've got a specialist in the field. Would would most likely be Adam O'Sullivan. Um, so it's, it's not something I necessarily want to rush. I, and I think if you have too short a consultation period, you you kind of run into um, accusations of uh, not giving people enough time. So I, I would envisage a period of about of about four weeks once we launch something. Now I know that we've got a, another meeting of the panel in March, but I don't feel a race to get something out before then. I mean, if panel members would like time to uh, think about questions and, and send them across uh, by email or something to the to the officer team. That's fine too, I think. Councillor Lund. Yeah, I mean, what I was also going to say is that sometimes people have the perception that consultations are a, sort of a, a fast. We already know what we're going to do. And I, I think just to re-emphasise on this particular case, I have no knowledge of what we particularly want to achieve so it is it's very important that our consultation and, and obviously the people very passionate about it previously so far were the, the tenants on, on tailgate parade as an example i think you know in respect of their passion and and the, the concerns they had we need to be very careful about how we word our consultation so it doesn't look like we do know what we're going to conclude because i don't know what, you know all i can say is i have no idea what i'm going to conclude at the end of this process and so you know we don't want a consultation where we ask all these questions and then ignore the answers which would be a waste of time yeah i, I, I totally agree thank you thank you for that comment any any other panel members on the consultation point councillor mcgrawley please um no just just following on from tim is what exactly is he said after the consultation then what next you know, we we'll, we will need to be acting on, you know, what what's come out of the consultation, because you know we don't want to be accused of, you know, having done a consultation and done nothing about it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. and and it is a it is a big thing, especially in Tilgate, you know, and not just Tilgate, but all the other shops, you know, shop owners, and you know, the the, the big thing out there is is the rent. You know, probably more from the, the the shop owners than you know the residents with this consultation. So we, we've got to be careful with that. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you, thank you, Councillor Mugali and um, Councillor Ailing. Hello. Um, yeah, I think the consultation should have 
um, questions like how much do you use your local parade and what do you use your local parade for? Is it just takeaways or do you use it for like I go to the co-op with my one? Um, do you use, um, what would you use, what would you prefer to have if you um, so if they would prefer to have, say, a local greengrocer or a butcher, do you know what I mean? What, what uses they would prefer or what uses they use? I'm not quite sure how to word it, but because I think because of COVID, you know, there, there's a couple of things and I wouldn't like to say that's good that's come out of it because, not, you know, too many people have died to say that. Um, but one of the things that has come out of COVID is that we are using their local parade and maybe people would want to use their local parade more if there was more that they could use uh, if I'm making that if making any sense um, because I've got a co-op I've got the chemist I've got the news agent so I use them but would I use a greengrocers if I had one I probably would would I use a butchers if I had one yeah I probably would um, so we need to find out whether or not people were willing to use these shops if they were there because there's no point putting a butcher's there if nobody's going to use it if they go to tesco's so we need to know we need to find out what the usage is and what it would be if we changed the um ratio of takeaways to uh shopping I don't know if I'm making sense, but I think you can, Eileen. I mean, it make, makes sense to me. I think you've got some some good ideas there for the kind of questions that we we, we should be asking around needs, wants and needs, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's really good. So I think there we got a, a, a um, the beginnings of a viewpoint in that we we should separate the uh, questions by constituency as. Councillor Lunn put it because there's there's going to be a different emphasis if you're if you're running a, a unit on the parade to so you're either that or you're a resident or you're both um, so I think we need to take account of that and really I, I think we should be referring back to the report that was um, prepared for the overview and scrutiny commission some months ago and which was um, I, which was resubmitted at our first panel meeting um, last month. So I think it's helpful to think of if we were running a, a shop and an outlet on the neighbourhood parades, what what would our questions be? What would our concerns be? And, and frame frame some questions around that. What I'm going to suggest to give colleagues more time, as per Councillor London's suggestion, really, is to say if we uh, submit specific ideas for questions um, to, um, to the officer team and share between us as members of the panel via email over the next week so by next Monday would that be reasonable just to and then have the officers draft a, a set of questions that we can uh, uh, review informally. Councillor Lung. Sorry just one more thought struck me was for this questionnaire for both sort of tenants and landlords do we also need to sort of set some context around it so they understand you know that they might go i don't want a betting shop i want a a greengrocer for example but obviously you know we are contractually obliged to the tents we have at the moment but we're not just going to come and <laughs> chuck them out because all the residents have said they'd prefer a greengrocer instead so maybe just some sort of brief context around what the council can and can't do and what it's looking at what it could possibly do yeah i mean I, thank you i think it's a really good idea and i you know as the bulk of this is going to be online anyway we could um we could supply a link to the report i just referred to and an executive summary of that which um, illustrates the, what you just said the council roles responsibilities and powers mm -hmm. to give to give context to the consultation yeah, I think I think that would be a, a, a good way forward. Mm. But are there any? So if we if we try and get some any kind of specific questions we'd like to be included in the consultation, back to the officers by this time next week, please, with a, on a copy all basis. And um, okay, well I think 
concludes that item six. Then there's item seven, general updates and information. Um, so this is from panel members and from officers. So I'll invite panel members first. Any any particular news or intelligence you'd like to share about the neighbourhood parades? No, I'll invite officers. Are there any particular updates? No. Um, um, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure whether it's an update or an intelligent, but I believe some and I'm not sure whether it could be discussed on here, but I believe some of the tenants are going to court or have gone to court. So I don't know how it affects this session or you know how it affects us and what decisions and policies we can make because it's an ongoing case. I, yes. I don't know. It's a good question, Councillor Mugali. I think we're limited in what we can what we can say on that, given its, um, yeah. its legal position. But I'll I'll bring in Sue Bader to um, in case there are any comments we can make. And I appreciate they might be very limited. Mm. Sue. Uh, Yes, I mean, the process under which the Tilgate tenants are going to court is under the Landlord and Tenant Act. Um, and it's due process under that act uh, in, in terms of their lease renewals. Um, so we, we, we can't particularly comment. Um, and whatever happens through that court process is, is a process which will happen anyway. Mm. It is, is not something that we can um, alter. Mm. But I think what we're doing in terms of the parades um, is, 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 is fine and we, we, can, we can do that um, not ignoring the Tilgate Parade but knowing that we can't alter what is going on um, in terms of the, those that court process under the Landlord and Tenant Act, um, if that makes sense. Yes, that's 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 fine. Thank you, Sue Bader, for that. Um, well, that that concludes this meeting of the the panel. Therefore, um, I well, item eight. There's no supplemental agenda. I just highlight. I just highlight again the the date of our next panel meeting, which will be which will be the eleventh of March. And um, yeah, um, so. Does anyone else have any other business they want to raise? Is yeah. it the same time? Yeah, 6.30 p.m. 11th of March. Oh, I've like got it on there. It's OK, I've got it on the diary. Thank you. OK, I'd like to thank uh, our panel members, um, officers and our, our guests contributed this evening. And uh, thanks to, to uh, those who watch these proceedings. OK, right. Good night, everyone. OK, thank, thank you. you. Thank Good, you. Night. Good night. Good night.